Have you been battered up any? I mean, do you, do you actually bear any physical wounds? A few, yeah. yeah. Despite growing up in poverty and being forced to mine coal to support his four hungry siblings, he defied the odds to become one of the most resilient actors in the film industry. That's right, I cost a lot. Known for his bold lines and jaw-dropping stunts, this action icon's journey was marked by adversity, hidden beneath the glow of fame. Today, let's delve into Bronson's gritty origins and the startling controversies that punctuated his life. Come on, come on, hurry it! Get in that cell. Early years. Born in November 1921 in Ehrenfeld, Pennsylvania, Charles Bronson experienced financial hardship in his large family of 14 siblings. At the age of six, he had no proper clothes for school and often wore hand-me-downs, including a dress belonging to his sister. His relationship with his father was complex, marked by conflicting emotions, and memories of family tensions lingered. Bronson was remarkably private about his private life, but occasionally mentioned his upbringing, such as his father cutting his hair to prevent lice. These anecdotes highlighted the family's struggles. Bronson also spoke of giving his own clothes, even socks, to his siblings after long days in the mines. Growing up in a financially strapped family and starting work at a young age took its toll on Bronson, who began smoking at nine. Working in the coal mines from a young age was a necessity after his father died when he was 10 and he became the family breadwinner. Despite the hardships, he remained committed to supporting his family and continued to work in the mines after leaving school. Bronson struggled with English at first, but persevered and became the first in his family to graduate from high school. His time in the mines was hard, with miners earning barely a dollar per ton of coal extracted. The experience left him with a lasting fear of confined spaces, which was portrayed in the film The Great Escape. In the stove, we keep fire burning always. This way the goons will not feel like moving it. Good. Despite surviving the Great Depression and its challenges, Bronson's life would be marked by other obstacles. The Army Life In 1943, during World War II, Bronson was drafted into the Army. Despite leaving home for enemy territory, he cherished his time in the military. Bronson trained at the 760th Flexible Gunnery Training Squadron in Kingman, Arizona, before joining the 61st Bombardment Squadron stationed on Guam in 1945. As a nose gunner aboard a B-29 Superfortress bomber, he flew 25 missions over the Pacific, including missions over Japan. Although not hailed as a hero, he served with unwavering dedication and was awarded the Purple Heart for his three years of service and sacrifice. During his military service, Bronson faced combat and injury, but found a purpose and fulfillment that transcended earlier hardships. He considered his enlistment a blessing, enjoying good food, proper clothing, and improving his English. Growing up in a diverse community in Ehrenfeld, where accents and languages varied, Bronson was accustomed to mimicry and imperfect English, which fostered camaraderie. In the Army, Bronson's Ehrenfeld-influenced accent sometimes led to misunderstandings about his nationality. Yet his military service was transformative, providing valuable opportunities for personal growth. After his honorable discharge in 1946, Bronson was initially disoriented, but a stroke of good fortune soon intervened, redirecting his path and shaping his future endeavors. After the war, after leaving the army, Bronson tried various jobs to support himself, from cooking to bricklaying, his foray into acting began unexpectedly when he helped paint sets for actors in Atlantic City. Intrigued, he decided to try acting himself, setting the stage for his eventual professional career. The transition to acting proved challenging for Bronson, who shared a rundown apartment with aspiring actor Jack Klugman. Despite their modest surroundings, both had high aspirations. Klugman noticed Bronson's penchant for neatness and his skill as an ironer. In addition to his domestic duties, Bronson worked as a set designer for a Philadelphia theater company. Bronson's entry into acting was driven by practicality rather than a predetermined career path. After attending a play with a friend, he saw acting as a low-risk opportunity for financial gain. Despite uncertain aspirations and minimal outside encouragement, he pursued acting with determination, often appearing in plays without significant recognition or lasting impressions. Bronson made his film debut in 1951 with a small, uncredited role in You're in the Navy Now, starring Gary Cooper. You beat up four men, you put one of them in sick bay, and you've got nothing to say? They, they said I'd take a bat in a distilled water. 
I didn't take no bad in it. This war comedy showcased Cooper's commanding presence and inspired Bronson's own style. Early standout roles included Pat and Mike with Spencer Tracy and Katherine Hepburn, and House of Wax opposite Vincent Price, where Bronson's portrayal of a mute and deaf companion made a lasting impression. Throughout the 1950s, Bronson's imposing physique and distinctive presence made him a familiar face on television and in the movies. Often cast as the villain's henchman, especially in westerns, he became a staple of the entertainment landscape. One memorable television role was in a 1956 episode of Gunsmoke called The Killer, in which Bronson portrayed a cunning outlaw who resorts to murder to get rid of bedbugs, demonstrating his versatility as an actor. Marshal, you got nothing on me. I killed those two men in self-defense. Sure. There ain't no court in the world to convict me. I'm an innocent man. In 1958, Bronson landed starring roles in B-movies, notably Roger Corman's Machine Gun Kelly, and the lead role in the television series Man with a Movie Camera. The following year, he teamed up with Steve McQueen and Frank Sinatra in Never So Few, where all three actors were doubled by Lauren Janes, known for his contributions to film history. Before delving into Bronson's rise to stardom, it's worth mentioning the tumultuous nature of his first marriage, which began promisingly but ended in heartbreak. The First Wife in 1949, Charles Bronson married Harriet Tendler, whom he had met in her early days as an actress. Harriet, the only child of a Jewish farmer, began her acting career at the age of 18, enrolling at the Bessie V. Hicks School for Stage, Screen, and Radio in Philadelphia in 1947. She developed romantic feelings for Bronson, eight years her senior, and by 1951, he had secured his first film role. Initially, Bronson began his Hollywood career under his original surname, Bukinski. However, in the midst of the Red Scare of the 1950s, marked by widespread fear of communism, he changed his Lithuanian surname to Bronson to improve his prospects. Senator Joe McCarthy's anti-communist fervor targeted people from Eastern Europe and those with left-wing views. In 1953, under the name Bronson, he found work as a reliable character actor often playing roles as diverse as Native Americans, prisoners, cowboys, fighters, and criminals, thanks to his rugged appearance and ethnic features. As the Bronson family enjoyed professional success, their marriage came under strain. Despite the joy of welcoming a daughter and a son, tensions grew between them. While filming The Great Escape in Germany, Bronson became romantically involved with Jill Ireland, a British actress who was married to fellow actor David McCallum. This affair eventually led to the end of Bronson's marriage to Harriet. Bronson then began a new chapter in his personal life by marrying Jill, who was also divorced from McCallum. Their tumultuous separations and subsequent marriages attracted considerable tabloid attention. Despite the public scrutiny, Bronson continued to be one of the most profitable film actors of the 1970s, frequently appearing on screen with Jill until her death in 1990. Initially known as Bronson's supportive wife, Harriet handled their separation with grace. Determined to forge her own identity, she pursued a fulfilling career as a radio talk show host in Los Angeles and authored three books, including Charlie and Me. Her resilience in redefining her life's path is a testament to her strength. Harriet's marriage ended publicly and emotionally, recognizing that Bronson's celebrity status played a role. She was the one who cared for their children and provided unwavering support as he rose in Hollywood. The success. Bronson's Hollywood breakthrough came at the age of 39 in 1960 with his role as Bernardo O'Reilly in John Sturge's The Magnificent Seven, a remake of Akira Kurosawa's Seven Samurai. $20. This pivotal film launched his career and led to prominent roles in The Great Escape, The Dirty Dozen, and The Battle of the Bulge. His rise to stardom was attributed to his charisma and portrayal of the silent, brooding type who exuded an intimidating aura. Renowned critic Roger Ebert praised Bronson's authenticity in tough roles, noting his unique ability to convey a propensity for real violence, unlike actors such as Clint Eastwood or Lee Marvin. Bronson's perpetually irritable demeanor fueled by frustration at Hollywood's slow recognition of his talents, was channeled into his performances, sometimes to negative effect. James Garner, Bronson's co-star in The Great Escape, 
initially struggled to get on with him because of Bronson's abrasive behavior on the set. Although their relationship improved over time, Garner noted Bronson's underlying anger and tendency to hold grudges. Despite portraying angry characters on screen, Bronson maintained a modest view of his acting abilities. He compared himself to a common commodity and emphasized the importance of effective marketing. Bronson believed in doing what was necessary for a role to fulfill its purpose, a philosophy that contributed to his successful career. Bronson's screen persona often reflected a man embittered by life's injustices, drawing on his own hardships to effortlessly portray such roles with depth and authenticity. Despite his reputation for bitterness, he held a tender spot for his wife, Jill, revealing a softer side beneath his tough exterior. He's been sitting here telling you terrible stories. Is he? Yes, about, about how calm he is and how the stories about him aren't true. Relationship with Jill. In the 1960s, David McCallum brought his wife, Jill Ireland, to the set of The Great Escape. Bronson joked about stealing McCallum's wife, which initially upset him. Ironically, Bronson married Ireland a year later in 1968. Despite tensions, they reconciled and maintained a friendly relationship. The Bronson family settled in a large Bel Air mansion and raised seven children, two from Bronson's previous marriage, three from Ireland's and two of their own, named Zuleika and Katrina. Interestingly, Katrina Holden Bronson is not biologically related to Charles Bronson. She later revealed that she was adopted by him. Nevertheless, she went on to have a successful career as a director and actress, appearing in films such as Daltrey Calhoun and Spanish Fly. The couple worked together on over 16 films during their relationship. Although Jill Ireland wasn't as famous as Bronson at first, he made sure she had a prominent presence alongside his, using his celebrity status to her advantage. Well, what do I call you? Horse? <laughs> Jill Ireland tragically died of breast cancer in 1990. Despite later marrying Kim Weeks, Bronson never fully recovered from the loss of his beloved wife. As a poignant tribute, he had a custom-made cane made with a hollow center to hold her ashes. As Bronson neared the end of his career and life, his legacy was defined by his iconic role in the Death Wish series, which showcased his acting skills and unique personality. How are you going to die? Throughout his esteemed career, Bronson struggled with the frustration of being typecast in B-movie roles. However, his performance in Sean Penn's 1991 film The Indian Runner marked a decisive change. In this role, he delivered a subdued and nuanced performance, moving away from his usual tough guy image. Despite critical acclaim, The Indian Runner failed to make a significant impact at the box office and was Bronson's last film. Nevertheless, it served as a fitting swan song, showcasing his versatility and leaving a lasting impression on his remarkable career. Behind his tough guy persona, Bronson had a softer side and a deep appreciation for art, often indulging in painting as a hobby. He got more satisfaction from discussing his artwork in interviews than from his acting roles. To ensure that his paintings were judged on their merits rather than his fame, Bronson adopted his birth name, Buczynski, to maintain anonymity while pursuing his passion. His belief in letting the quality of his art speak for itself proved true as he successfully sold many paintings under this guise. Bronson's artistic pursuits were interrupted in 1998 when he underwent hip replacement surgery, leading to his retirement from acting. He died at the age of 81 on the 30th of August, 2003, after a battle with metastatic lung cancer and respiratory failure. Beyond his tough exterior, Bronson's legacy extends to his lesser known talents and diverse interests leaving a lasting mark on both the entertainment industry and the art world. Goodbye. So what do you think about the life of Charles Bronson? Leave your comments below. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.